Greetings this amazing morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa coming to you live on the script of prescription this amazing but wonderful morning. I'm excited as always to have this opportunity to speak into our lives by the grace of God. Shall we pray this morning? Father, we thank you and we bless you this morning. We ask that, Lord, you're going to speak to us and bless our lives. Give us a new dimension of how you want us to move and live for the glory of your name. So we honor you and we bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to welcome you wherever you're watching us from. I want to speak about a subject this morning, parental action, parental action. This is very, very important, and I want to apportion responsibility on every parent. Either you have a child or children right now, or you aspire or have a dream and a vision to have children in the future. I want to address parental action this morning. I read the Bible in the book of Job, chapter number 1 and verse number 5. I'm reading from the New International Version, Job chapter number 1 and verse number 5. The Bible says, when a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cast God in their hearts. This was Job's regular Custom. This was Job's regular action. Other versions say regular practice. Others say continually. It's very important for us to understand. So regularly custom practice and continually is what Job did by offering sacrifice for his children per adventure if they had committed any sin. Now, in our nation, this particular period, we have got children who are going back to school. They're going to be there for a while. They're going to be under the guidance and direction of, the, of their teachers and sometimes even leadership from other pupils or students. I want you to understand that though we are seeding these children to other people to take care of our lives, we do not abrogate our responsibility of spiritual uh, control or guidance or cover by virtue of us being parents. Now, Job is a perfect example. When children had come, they were with him and they have had, you know, a time of feasting. He always did a sacrifice, a burnt sacrifice for the Lord for them, just in the event that his children had done something despicable before God. Now, God has never despised a contrite and a broken spirit. Now, what this means that when you take responsibility to be able to mend and correct your relationship with God, God has never despised actions like those. So Job is a perfect example of what we should do as parents. We should take spiritual responsibility over our children. Now, when we are taking our children back to school, particularly in our nation or this country where the program for school is just now moving on, we have to do what we got to do as parents. We have to continue to look at God, offer our children before God, just commit our children, dedicate our children before God, allow God to be in control, to be in charge, to take responsibility over these children. And how do we do this? We have to give a sacrifice, an offering before God as a, as a sign of faith, as a symbol of the control we want God to take over our children. Now, I'm sure if you attend to church, you could do this offering to your church. If there is a ministry that blesses your heart, you could do this kind of offering to that particular ministry that blesses your heart. But we must continually offer a sacrifice for our children because when we sit them out there, we do not know what is going to go on there. We can only by faith believe that our children will consistently focus on what God has called them to do. They'll focus on their education. They'll focus on their studies. They'll focus to do the best they can ever do. But there is a role that God plays. There's a role that God plays on these children in the sense that when we offer a sacrifice, before God. Now, why a sacrifice? You see, we must be able to pay a price 
for God to be able to take control and charge. When we say we are born again, we believe by virtue of our faith in our hearts and our confession in our mouths that Jesus Christ is the Lord. So when we dedicate our lives before God, we take a step of faith. So when we do some actions, spiritual actions, we know that God is able to carefully interpret our action and give control over the lives of our children. If we want our children to do well in examination, we find them schools, we find them places where we want them to go and excel, and we pay the price. We pay school fees. We, we, we are able to motivate teachers. We are able to buy books for revision for these children. We are able to do everything we got to do to ensure that our children have got a ride where they can be able to shine and be the best that they can ever be. Praise the name of the Lord. So this morning, I don't know if you've ever done it before, but what you desire desire, the dream you want for your children, you have to do something. You have to offer a sacrifice so that God can be able to act. Now, listen to me. You know, altars speak. Now, an altar is a place where you receive spiritual guidance and authority, a place where you give sacrifice. Now, altars speak. Altars have got a language. Altars have a voice. When you are giving a sacrifice before God, then God is able to act in your favor. And that's why I'm insisting this morning as we take our children back to school, as we dedicate them to go back to school and take their time as they begin in the season, we want to pray that God will grant them a spirit of excellence in the name of the Lord. I know there are also parents who are struggling to get the money they require to take their children back to school. We want to pray this morning that God will provide an opportunity in the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. So this morning, as I stand and as I speak to you this morning, I want to encourage you to be like Job. You know, examples that happen in the Bible were done to give us an expectation, to give us a learning curve that we can know what to do, for what reason and why. We must therefore dedicate, protect, <coughs> excuse me, and lift up our children before God so that God can ideally bless our lives, protect, and cause them to rise up in the direction and the dimension that we want God to do. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we got to do. We're going to make a special prayer for our children as they go to school in this particular season whether college, primary school, secondary school, whatever level of education that they are going to this season, I pray that the Lord will protect and guide them. If you can kindly do of a sacrifice, you can go to your church, you can go to any ministry that blesses your life and just dedicate your children by way of a sacrifice that the Lord will come through for them. This is what I came to speak about this morning, parental action. The onus is on you as a parent to do what you got to do to secure the lives of your children. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning and we bless you because of your word. We want to dedicate our children to you as they go back to school. Lord, as parents, we are praying for safety. We are praying for health. We are praying for a spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, our king. Have your way, our master. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to lift you, we want to honor you, we want to bless you, and we want to thank you this morning. This we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May the good Lord be with you, the good Lord bless you, the good Lord lift you in the name of Jesus Christ. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sacco, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shalom. The good Lord be with you and the good Lord bless you.